Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Arlene, Arlene with a Y. And today I want to talk to you about how to achieve financial independence and home ownership as a single mom. Breaking the chains of toxic relationships. So, I'm just reading you my little title there, but uh, yeah, this is not an easy task. It's not an easy feat. Um, it all depends on how you started, where you started. Not every woman who is a mother married a, a man who was not good for her. Some women are happily married, and for those, I bless you. You're very lucky. Um, but some of us rushed into things and got into it way too fast, way too young, for all the wrong reasons. And... We can't go back and change the past, and we can't say that we regret the decisions that we've made, because one of the, my personal models in life has always been that I don't regret anything, because everything in life is either a lesson or a reward. So if I do something and the consequences are bad, there's going to be a lesson to be learned from that. So learn the lesson, um, and don't do it again, and do better next time. So that's kind of a valuable thing. However, if you make a decision and it turns out to work out in your favor, that's a reward. So I don't really have regrets. Despite having been through some difficulties because of some decisions that I made, those difficulties taught me. Unfortunately, maybe some people, you know, have to learn things the hard way, um, you know, but it is what it is. So fast forward, I am 40 years old. I have two daughters. They are 16 and 12, and I am a homeowner, and I am financially independent. Am I financially swimming in the dough? No, I'm not, because this time um, is a very tough time. This economy is very difficult. This inflation, as we all know, and we see it all over the news and social media, is kicking all of our butts. Just last year, that's when the change happened, because the year prior, I was able to go to the nail salon and get my nails done. I was able to go to the lash salon and get my lashes done. I have a little bit of mascara on right now, and, you know, it's kind of dripping under my eyes, but... Um, I used to be able to go to Pilates classes, which I loved. I used to be able to get a monthly massage and I cut out all those things back in August and September of last year when I started looking at my numbers. So first and foremost, regardless of where you're starting, if you're still in your ex-husband's house or your, your, your toxic partner whom you had children with, you need to get out. You need to go. Like, if you're still dragging and beating this dead horse, you need to start come, having a come to Jesus with the reality that as long as you stay there, it's never going to really end. So if this is something that's particularly hard for you, this is a whole other subject that, can, that merits its own video. But get out. This is the importance of having family, having friends. Let me just look at some of my notes here because there were a few points that I wanted to make for you guys. So, um... The importance of family, how they helped me get on my feet. So I'll just tell you my personal story. Yeah, I was with the father of my kids for 15 years, like I've said in previous videos. And I tried moving out, but it was very difficult for me. Um, I couldn't live with my mom because my brother was a, an addict, and it was not a safe place for me to be with my daughters. Um, unfortunately, sadly, uh, my brother did, did pass away. But that opened up an opportunity for me to move in with my mother. I wasn't financially capable of paying rent or, or buying a home of my own because I spent so many years with my ex, the father of my children, pretty much giving him a big chunk of my income to help pay for our living expenses. And so it didn't allow me the opportunity to save any money to put away for my own future. So that's very important. If you can put money away for yourself to find a place to live, if you don't have family, if there's no one you can live with, then you're going to have to find a place to rent, even if it's a studio apartment. When I lived with my mother, I lived in a bedroom with my two kids. So I never took them away from their father. Um, we always did 50-50 custody. So some nights, you know, they would stay with their dad and they had their room. But when they came home to me, we all shared one room. That king-size bed that you see there, had a futon next to it in a room smaller than this one. And that's where I had everything that I owned, plus a few things in storage. And I lived there for a whole year. So you do what you need to do to get out because you need that distance, okay? You're, you're going to see how drastically your mindset goes through like a whirlwind of like roller coasters as you process and grieve everything that you've 
been through, or the life that you had, everything that you feel like you're losing, the unknown of what, what you're headed towards, you need the distance, you need the space, you need the mental clarity to get to the process of healing. Okay, so the importance of family, if you have anyone that you can trust, ask if it's okay. If it's not, find a cheap place where you can stay. If you don't have a degree and you're still with the father of your kids and you find that that relationship is probably going nowhere fast, go to school. That's what I did. Go to school. Um, it wasn't even with the intention of, I'm going to go to school to graduate to leave him. No, it was because he didn't even have a, such a steady, good paying job at the time, and neither did I. And we were kind of living in poverty and we had a second child on the way. So I decided to go back to school to get a better career for our family, for our collective household income to be better. And it was very difficult because I couldn't work while I was in my ultrasound program. I'm an ultrasound tech and I decided to become one when I went for my ultrasound with my second daughter, my first one. I said, you know what? This is it. This is what I want to do. I can make a whole other video about that too. But um, I, I didn't even have to pay for school. I was above the age of 26. I was already a single mother because we weren't legally married. And so I applied for the Pell Grant and the Pell Grant covered everything except for like books and my uniforms, my scrubs and the summer courses, which I believe I had to pay for on my own, but there were just very few summer courses, only a few hundred dollars. And I went to a public community college, Miami-Dade College. And instead of getting hundreds of thousands of dollars into student debt, I chose something that was, I would always say, try to study something in the STEM field. So the science, technology, engineering, mathematics, something that has to do with science or math. Art um, and literature is beautiful. We all have passions for the arts, for the humanities, but it's very difficult to find good paying work. And I would say anything that you do that is a passion, the minute you turn it into a job, it becomes a chore. And you're not even gonna enjoy it that much anyway. So instead of looking for the type of work that you love, try to look for the type of work that's gonna pay you well. Try to look for lucrative work. As long as it's not something you absolutely dread. And I've always been drawn and interested in sciences and the human body always fascinated me, but I didn't want to be a nurse. I feel like nursing is a highly stressful job and I didn't have the means or the support or the upbringing to be able to pursue a career in medicine, like to be a doctor. But I think if I had had that, I think I could have done it. But that's probably for another life. Um, and I didn't want to be like a medical assistant or a billing person because I knew that the income potential was also limited in that regard. So I found a happy middle. I went for like the allied healthcare career, allied healthcare field, and I went for imaging. X-ray, too much radiation. CT scans, people are going to freak out just like MRI scans, get me out of here, and radiation in the CT scan. Nuclear medicine, <laughs> I just, I, it just looked weird, boring. I didn't want to do that. So ultrasound. Fantastic. It just made sense. It just clicked for me. I started the classes. Everything went well. It was just easy for me. It took a long time for me to figure out what I wanted to do. I already had an associate of arts degree, so I had to go back to school to get this associate of science degree. So I have two associates degrees. So whatever it is that you're at right now, whether you have a job, whether you graduated high school, didn't graduate high school, all you need to do is put one foot in front of the other and think of what's the next logical step that you can take in the most efficient manner to get yourself to move the needle towards the, the goal that you want to reach, the position that you want to be in, whether it's going back to get a GED or whether it's just taking a vocational course. Um, but also, first you have to establish some sort of stability. Then is usually when you start to feel comfortable branching out in other areas. For example, I've been an ultrasound tech for 10 years, but I wanted to put my feet in the ground and root myself. And now that I have my home, I started my YouTube channel. My TikTok channel blew up last year and, you know, I got a little bit of revenue from that. But um, I also house hack, you know, right behind that wall, there's a section of my house that I rent out. So these are different streams of income that are helping facilitate me maintaining myself in addition to some child support money, which is not a whole lot, but it's something and it helps most definitely. Um, never stop learning. Never, ever, ever stop learning. Become autodidactic. If you don't know that word, it's a great word. I love that word. Autodidactic. Basically, it means self-taught, self-learning. You don't have to go to school to learn something. Like, you can learn things on YouTube. I always say that YouTube, I was watching this guy the other day. Oh, I forgot his name now. 
I will give credit once I know his name. If I know his name, I'll tag him down there. He was talking about how YouTube channels are either entertaining or educational. There's like usually two fields that it lands in, like two um, genres. And yeah, the entertainment ones get a lot more views, but the educational ones get a lot more quality views. And one of the things he said, I was like, oh my God, I was just thinking this and saying this before I even heard this man saying it, is that social media and the internet and YouTube, it's it's very easy to be wasting your time. If you're not using it for intention and you're just using it to entertain yourself, you're wasting your time. You're not moving the needle in any direction that's going to be in your favor. So you should be using it to learn something or if you already know something valuable, show it so that other people can learn from you and that will come back to you tenfold. And that's what I'm here doing right now because I feel like it's unfair of me to see other mothers, single mothers struggling. And here I am, I live in a decently nice home. I'm able to pay my bills. Do I have a huge disposable income? No, but there's a reason for that, okay? I remodeled my house. I got into debt and I knew what I was doing. I made that decision. And I knew that I was gonna have to take some time to pay it all off. So give me about a year or two and things are gonna be a lot more, a lot more wiggle room, a lot more space in my pockets. But then in addition to that, another three to five years, a couple of other things are also gonna be paid off. And in less than 10 years, my disposable income will be sufficient to the point where hopefully I could work part-time. I won't, I won't even need my full salary anymore. So that is the goal because I don't want to completely not work at all. I like what I do, but I feel like my hours in the day are very limited and my energy is limited and I get exhausted. So I don't want to work full time until I'm 67. But um, I do need to secure a steady flow of income. And I just got off on a tangent, but basically I wanted to tell you that the channel that I am working on right now, this video, what you're watching, is my way of trying to help women to put themselves in a better position, okay? First of all, if you have any kind of problems like drinking, smoking, drugs, you need to take care of that. You need to check yourself into some sort of a rehab facility and you need to take care of that. But this is for the general single mom, like someone who was married, maybe she had a job, maybe it wasn't the best paying job, and she's getting divorced and she's starting her life over. And she's freaking out because she doesn't know how to. She doesn't know how she's gonna do it. Same thing happened to me. Living in my mom's house in a tiny bedroom with my two daughters, thinking, "How the heck am I ever gonna get out of this house and live on my own?" So I saved up money—not a whole lot of money, but enough money to be able to put a down payment with an FHA loan, which, as you may, may or may not know, it's like a small, like two percent down payment on a townhouse very far away from my um, neighborhood that I grew up in and I was able to live there for a couple of years I didn't remodel anything the house was pretty nice the way that it was and then another house became available and I had already made profit just from the equity and I sold that one and I got this one so everything is just putting one foot in front of the other and always thinking always brainstorming always learning ways in which you can improve ways in which you can get better never ever ever stop learning you need to learn about real estate you need to learn about finances how to balance your checkbook how to save money, how much money you should have in savings. You should have uh, you know, at least three to six months worth of your monthly income in an emergency fund. I don't even have that right now. So there's tips and techniques about money that maybe I'll just dedicate a specific video to that. And everything that I'm telling you guys right now that I'm saying, I should dedicate a video to that. I should dedicate a video to that. I should dedicate, I'm gonna look back on this and I'm gonna write them down and I will deliver. Do not worry. I'm just still getting my feet wet with this video. So I'm with this channel, so just bear with me, okay? Um, planning for retirement, super important, super duper important, but we got to get our ducks in a row. Okay. There's an order of operations that you need to follow. First, you need to establish yourself. Just remember that everything in life is ebbs and flows, right? That applies to everything. So if you're at your lowest low and you are terrified and panicking and take it from someone who had severe panic attacks when I was much younger. Okay. Almost on a daily basis, crippling panic attacks. Um, when you start understanding more about the world around you and understanding life and how things function and having a little more faith in yourself, you, it starts to get a little bit easier. When you know that, that you're, on, you're in the valley right now, you're like low, you're riding the wave, eventually it's going to come back up. Things just are always like that. 
Um, be careful with consumerism. Consumerism is almost like a cult. My God, like just buy what you need and, and love and that's it. Like don't buy things just because they're, they're trendy and everyone else has one. Um, it's, it's so easy to blow money that way, so easy and that will definitely set you back with your goals. Um, let's see, I'm just gonna wing it from here because that's pretty much the couple of things that I had written down. Like I said, most of my videos are pretty much um, unscripted and just, what's the word? Improvised. It's just talking off the top of my head. So this one topic that I wrote was just to inspire a video. And you know, how to achieve financial independence, home ownership as a single, single mom, breaking the chains of toxic relationships. My God, that's a whole lot of information. I mean, I made it, the last video I made was talking about my toxic relationship. And it all starts with you understanding something. You need to understand that no matter who you are, no matter where you were born, no matter what you look like, no matter how tall you are, how thin you are, how fat you are, what race you are, it doesn't matter. You are worthy of everything that your heart desires in this world. And just because it's not all being delivered to you all at once, just because it may require patience, it may take time, it may require work, it may require effort, you need to have a relationship with God. If you're an atheist and you don't believe in God, then source, universe, manifestation, whatever you want to call it. There has to be a relationship with the notion that there is a belief that the universe does not conspire against you. When you put something in your mind, you are going to eventually turn it into a reality, whether that be positive or negative. So be cautious of your thoughts. When these negative thoughts creep into your mind, justify yourself and say, hey, wait a minute. I know that I'm thinking these negative things, but you know what? I choose not to. These are fears. These are doubts. These are insecurities, but these do not have to be my, re my reality because I get to choose my reality. I had fears of going back to school and what if I didn't pass these classes or what if it was too hard? And the what if, what if, what if, what if, what if. Stop. Zip it. No more what if. You know what you're going to do? You're going to tell yourself, I'm going to take this step over here, this one step, and I'm going to do it and I'm going to succeed at it. And once I'm done with that step, I'm going to look at the next step. And again, you just put one foot in front of the other and you go achieving things little by little. We have to be financially responsible. We have to be financially responsible as women. Women love to shop and I am guilty of this too. You see that ginormous closet full of clothes that I barely ever use, okay? Shoes, clothes, handbags, makeup. I keep things so simple, you guys. Like I bought my own little like flash kit. These little things. This is like $9 on Amazon. But when I would go to my lash girl, which, you know, no offense to her, no hate on her. She's a wonderful, sweet girl. But man, $70 for a refill? And that refill was every two weeks, every two weeks. I was like, dude, I can't do this anymore. I have another bag here with uh, these press-on nails. Press, press-on nails. Mind you, I haven't worn press-on nails since like before Christmas, probably since Thanksgiving. Because I wanted to give my natural nails a chance to kind of heal. And you know, they're, they're looking pretty good. They're healing rather nicely. Um, but yeah, I'm done. I'm done. Whatever clothes is in there, that's the kind of clothes that's going to have to last me for at least 10 years because I am not going to be wasting money anymore on clothing. I just had a, a, an awakening, a moment of realization where I'm like, what the hell am I doing? Like I have credit card debt because I got the house that I wanted and I'm trying to pay it down, but it doesn't go down because I keep adding to it every time I get motivated and inspired to buy something else. And I'm realizing whatever you put your mind to, whatever you focus your thoughts on becomes your reality. And I shifted my thoughts from the things that I need and consumerism or the things that I desire and want to realizing what is it that I really want? What is the big picture? And it is to be financially independent. It is to be financially free, to have more disposable income, to be able to travel. That is my passion, my truest, truest passion, my why. You have to find what is your why. Obviously, my first why was to be able to take care of my children. Heaven forbid something should happen to their father. He's a good father. He's present in their life, but he was not a good partner and no one was there to take care of me. So I had to take care of me. Okay. My mother was a huge part of my life that helped me out of this hole that I was in. And without her, I probably couldn't have done it. But 
there's got to be someone in your life that you can count on. An old friend, a mother, a father, an uncle, someone, a sister, a neighbor, someone. Everyone has someone. And if you don't, just look a little harder. There's going to be someone there. And I had to primarily put myself and my children first. I wanted to establish a home for my children. If I didn't have children, I probably wouldn't even have a home like this. I'd probably be living in like a small apartment. I probably would have purchased it because I would have liked to have owned property. That was something that I would have wanted whether I was a mother or not. But I wanted something that was going to be comfortable for the three of us and something that gave me enough space to be able to rent out a portion because that is a humongous help. Without that rental, portion of my house. I can think of an in-laws quarters. I wouldn't be able to afford to live in this house, at least not for the time being because of all the debt that I'm paying from what I did. But I had a plan. I had a plan. I said, you know what? I had a plan and I've been distracted with all this like shopping and treating myself. No more. I still take good care of myself, but I'm more humble with myself now. And I've decided to start an Excel spreadsheet. Actually, I'm using Google Sheets because I already have a Gmail account and it's free. So I, I use my laptop and I open up my spreadsheet and I can also see it on my phone because it's, it's online so you can pretty much see it anywhere. And I created my own, here's my income, paycheck one, you know, rental income, child support one, paycheck two, child support two, and then the total. How much I expect and how much is actual. And then there's all my expenses from my mortgage, you know, my windows that I'm financing all the way down to like my monthly car wash, okay? There are things that I cut out, but there are things that I left in because, you know, you got to take care of your things. You take care of things, they last. I was leasing a car and I decided to buy out my lease and it was one of the best decisions I made. Note to self when I watch this back, we're going to make a video about how to, what's the smartest way to obtain a car? Okay, if you have the cash to buy yourself a used car so you don't have a payment, that's fucking phenomenal. That's fantastic. But if you don't, and if you're leasing a car, or if you're thinking about buying a brand new car, hold on, hold on. Do not buy a brand new car. The first three years loses so much value. We're going to make a separate video dedicated to that. But anyway, I got all my expenses. Then I have my credit card usages for varying expenses, such as groceries, um, Internet doesn't vary, but certain things are paid with a credit card because I can get the points from the credit card. So I have an, a Delta American Express card. I have a Delta, um, I mean, a Hilton American Express card. So Delta is the airline and I get flying points and Hilton is the hotel. I've been able to stay in a hotel for free. I've been able to fly for free because I put a lot of the things that I'm going to have to pay for anyway, like groceries and gas on those cards and I get the points. I no longer use them for gas because now I have a Shell MasterCard and I have the Shell Fuel Rewards and I usually get like 25 cents off the gallon. That's another little thing that I do to save money. Um, and I use my Shell card only for gas. And since you know you have to budget for gas every month, instead of using a debit card or using cash or writing checks where the money's going directly from your bank account directly to their pocket, use the middleman of the credit card. There are so many perks. There's cash back. There's points. I had, I have a Wells Fargo card that I just got. It's called the autograph card. 0% interest for 12 months. And if you spend $1,500 in the first three months, which I'm like, easy, because I have a $500 a month budget for groceries. So three months, $500, that's $1,500. You get like 30,000 points, which translates to about $300. So the balance that I have on that card, I'm not paying any interest. And I just got $300 knocked off because of the points. So there's just, there's, there's ways of doing things, okay, so that you don't have to suffer. You just got to be smart. You got to read, you got to research. The internet is your friend. Use the internet to learn, to absorb information. I'm learning about, you know, I have um, a rollover Roth IRA, uh, not a, a, a rollover IRA, traditional IRA, that is from all the old 401ks. If you've had old jobs in the past that you were placed into some sort of a retirement plan, Go back to that, find, the, find that paperwork and make a rollover. Like pick any company. There's Vanguard, there's Fidelity. I picked Fidelity and I had three 401ks from previous jobs that I rolled over to my Fidelity account and that's where I have my investments and they are growing. Okay, I learned about EFTs. I learned about index funds. Um, I do have a couple of stocks. Stocks are a little more risky. They're actually not even doing that well right now, but it, the idea is for, for the long run. But like the S&P 500, which is, the abbreviation is SPY. And then there's VOO, VTI. These are all things that I learned from YouTube channels. 
from the internet, from reading articles, from reading books, from listening to people who are in a better position than I am. Why would I listen to a person who doesn't have a life that I would want? So be smart, be strategic, always just be on the lookout for how can I advance things? How can I make things better? Of course you need to rest. Of course you need to have fun from time to time. But if your whole life is resting and having fun when you're not working because, hey, pff, we gotta put bread on our table, we gotta have a roof over our head, we gotta fill our gas tank, so we have to work. But if you just go to work and come home and that's all you do, do not expect your life to turn out to be very much. It will never change, okay? It doesn't matter how much time passes, how old you get, it doesn't matter if you're supposed to expect an inheritance or not. You need to always be focusing on growth. If you're not focusing on growth, here's the thing that happens, just like inflation, right? The dollar has a value and a dollar is a dollar. However, how much that dollar can buy you decreases with inflation. So essentially, if you're not making an effort to grow your dollars, they are losing value. You are losing money. It's the same thing with your goals and with your life progressing to become something better. If you are not always striving and looking for ways and ideas to make your life better, to improve upon it, and I'm sorry if you don't like it, if people say, well, money isn't everything and money, you know, a people, money is the root of all evil. Listen, money buys us health care. Money buys us food. Money buys us clothes. Money buys us education. I just signed up my daughter for a math tutoring program that's going to cost $400 a month. That hurts. It hurts my pocket. But you know what? I can do it because I have been working my butt off so that I can do those things for her. Because if she understands math and she passes and she's able to pick some sort of field of work that is in the math and sciences, she could never do that if I don't help her right now because she's not understanding. Um... I went to the doctor and I had to have a good diagnostic test and there are co-payments that I had to make. If I couldn't afford those co-payments, those diagnostic tests would not get done and you don't know what kind of underlying diseases you would have if you didn't have the money to pay to get those things done. So do not tell me that money is, you know, the root of all evil and it's not the most important thing and it can't buy happiness. It absolutely buys happiness because I sleep in that bed real happy, okay? So the camera I'm recording this on costs money, okay? I'm making this YouTube video because I want to help you guys to be able to feel good about yourself. Don't feel like you lost something just because your marriage didn't work out. Don't feel like a failure just because your family didn't turn out to be what you wanted it to be. I'm telling you this because this is how I felt. This is how I felt. And for a long time, I hated men. I hated my ex. I was not happy with my life. I didn't know where I was going. I felt ashamed and embarrassed. I didn't know what was going to become of my daughters. And I decided no more. No more victim mentality. What can I do to make things better? I have to move 20 miles away from my family and drive longer distances in order to get to work so that I can buy that house. So I can put my feet in the ground and cement myself and put my roots in and buy a piece of property finally so I can get some equity, then I'm going to do it. I didn't sit around and wait and all, make excuses and let months and years go by. I bought a piece of property and in two years that property went up so much in value and at that time in the market people were paying above appraisal prices for, for, for properties, at least here in the city of Miami. Right now it is a totally different market. It is, we're not even going to talk about that right now. But I was able to get a nice big um, equity return after paying my, re my, my realtors, after paying the closing costs, after paying back, you know, what I, what I still owed on the property. And I used that money to buy this house. And I did everything that I did. And people are like, you're crazy. You're doing too many things at once. Listen, I know myself. I know my tenacity. I know my discipline. I know when I want something done, I'm going to get it done. And no one's going to get in my way. Now, were there unexpected curveballs? Yes. This is what messed me up. That inflation. My, my electric bill skyrocketed. My water bill has, has been going up. My groceries have gone up. Everything. But this is not just me. This is everyone. So we're all kind of in the same boat. But you know what I did? You know what I did? Something that a lot of women are too scared to do. I asked for a raise. That is correct. I asked my boss for a raise. Every year, typically, if your employer is a good employer, they give about a 2 to 0. 0.5 to 3% raise. But the inflation was up by 8%. So how is 3% going to make a dent? And yet, I still, 
the girl in me was like, I can't ask for 8%. That's too much. Like, oh my God, like, what are they going to think of me? So I asked for 6%, but guess what? They didn't even hesitate and I got it. You know that men are more likely to ask for raises than women. I think there's like a 60% more likely to ask and get the raise than women. Women are like, I can't do that. Why? Why do you think that you're less deserving? I was in a tight position. Things got difficult when the inflation went up. And I'm working my butt off and I know I'm, I'm valuable to that company. And that's why. They saw my value and they gave it to me. I had a job before them that didn't want to give me a raise. And you know what? I quit. And I know it wasn't me. I quit them to be where I'm at now, but I know the problem wasn't me, it's them. Because since I've left, so many people have quit. So many people have left. I'm surprised they still have a business to run, okay? So that's how you know that you're not the problem, all right? So uh, we're going to wrap up this video. We're at 30 minutes. Um, if you have any comments, please, please feel free to share. Like, just all I ask is that you be kind, be nice, don't be rude. If you're rude, you're going to be blocked. There's this beautiful feature on YouTube called hide user from my channel. You will be hidden. And essentially what that means is that you can continue to watch my channel and you can continue to make comments, but no one will see it. So it's as if you're talking to yourself, you're speaking out into a void. So be nice and be kind. If you have questions, if you have comments, if you have, you know, stories that you would like to share, potential ideas for other future videos that you might like my opinion on, I would love to hear from you in the comments and I will gladly respond. It doesn't take a whole lot of effort to please just hit that little like button, just smash it, tap it, flick it, touch it, whatever it is that you like to do, hit the little like button if you like this video. And if you like my content, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and don't forget to tap that little bell, bing, because that bell will let you know every time you open up to YouTube, hey, this chick has just posted. Like right now, someone that I love on YouTube just posted and right after I'm done with this video, I'm gonna go watch her video. So. Um, yes, I uh, love you guys and I want us all to succeed. I want us all to do well. There's so much room for everyone to succeed. There's no need to have a scarcity mindset. We can all do this. I will see you guys in the next one.